In the heart of the Indonesian archipelago, on the serene island of Sumbawa, the towering peak of Mount Tambora stood as a sentinel, its majestic height often obscured by a veil of clouds. Its lower slopes, rich and fertile, were home to the Tambora tribe, a community deeply rooted in tradition and harmony with nature. They cultivated their lands, fished in the sapphire waters, and reveled in the rhythm of life that had persisted for generations. In this video, we're going to cover the notorious 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora. Beneath this picture of tranquility, the earth whispered of a brewing tempest. The mountain, which had stood silent for centuries, was about to unveil a story of fire and fury. Deep within its bowels, the magma chamber told a tale of tension and turmoil. Over time, the magma had cooled to a near crystalline state, growing increasingly viscous and trapping gas bubbles that yearned to break free. This heightened viscosity was a consequence of the magma's temperature, cooler than what one might expect from such a behemoth. But periodic injections of fresh magma from the depths disturbed this almost solid state and kept it fluidic, ensuing the chamber remained active, teeming with energy and potential. As days turned into nights and seasons ebbed and flowed, the island's inhabitants remained blissfully unaware of the geological drama unfolding beneath their feet. But in 1815, nature's patience wore thin. The pressure within the magma chamber, a ticking time bomb of pent-up energy, reached its breaking point. The once majestic Mount Tambora roared to life in a cataclysmic display of power, casting aside its cloak of serenity. The eruption was nothing short of apocalyptic, a colossal plume of ash and smoke ascended into the heavens, blocking out the sun and casting a shadow of uncertainty over the world below. The violent release gave birth to pyroclastic flows, avalanches of scalding gas and rock that consumed everything in its path. The Tambora tribe, the guardians of the mountain, faced the full wrath of this eruption. Their villages, a tapestry of life and culture, were buried in moments, echoing the tragic fate of Pompeii centuries earlier. But Tambora's voice was not confined to Sumbawa. Its echoes reverberated across the globe. The eruption spewed an unimaginable volume of ash and tens of millions of tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. These particles, high in the stratosphere, formed a dark shroud that dimmed the sun's rays, giving birth to the infamous year without a summer in 1816. Across continents, crops withered and temperatures plunged. Economies faltered as grain prices skyrocketed and livestock perished. The world, bound together by this volcanic event, faced food riots, disease outbreaks, and a palpable sense of despair. Yet, even in the darkest hours, the indomitable spirit of humanity shone through. Faced with adversity, innovation blossomed. The scarcity of horse fodder birthed the dray scene, a precursor to the modern bicycle. Writers and artists, inspired by the gloomy skies and societal upheavals, birthed timeless masterpieces, with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein standing as a testament to the era's tumultuous emotions. In the aftermath of the eruption, the once verdant island of Sumbawa transformed into a desolate, ashen landscape. The sun's rays struggled to pierce the thick veil of ash, casting a muted, eerie glow over the ruins. The cries of the Tambora tribe, who had once sung songs of harvest and joy, were replaced by a haunting silence broken only by the occasional whisper of wind carrying tales of a bygone era. Yet, even as the world grappled with the magnitude of the disaster, nature began its slow process of healing and renewal. From the depths of destruction emerged tendrils of hope. The ash, rich in minerals, gradually enriched the soil, and the first signs of green began to pierce the grey blanket. Birds, which had fled the volcanic fury, began their return, their songs heralding a new beginning. The survivors of the Tambora tribe, those scarred by memories of that fateful day, were resilient. They regrouped, sharing stories of survival and loss, and began the arduous task of rebuilding their lives. New villages were established, further from the ominous shadow of Tambora. The tales of the eruption, passed down through oral traditions, served as both a memorial to those who perished and a cautionary tale for future generations. Elsewhere in the world, societies adapted and evolved. The global cooling catalyzed discussions about climate and weather patterns, sparking early interest in meteorology and earth sciences. The challenges of the year without a summer prompted communities to develop better agricultural practices and food storage solutions, laying the groundwork for advancements in agronomy. As decades turned into centuries, the story of Mount Tambora, while fading from immediate memory, found its place in the annals of history and science. Researchers and explorers drawn by the tales of the eruption began to study the mountain, unearthing clues about its past and the forces that had led to the cataclysmic event. 
The excavations around the region revealed remnants of the Tambora tribe civilization, preserved in volcanic ash, offering valuable insights into their way of life. The legacy of the Tambora eruption serves as a testament to the cyclical nature of life, of destruction and creation, of endings and new beginnings. It stands as a humbling reminder of nature's might and the intricate balance that exists between our planet and its inhabitants. And as the modern world faces its own set of challenges, the tales from Tambora echo a timeless message of resilience, adaptation, and the indomitable spirit of humanity in the face of overwhelming odds. Thanks for watching.